this is going to be part three of the Max Ling Attack lecture. And uh, I got a game for you guys between Delaney and Hebden. So we've already seen a couple games in other series from Hebden. Uh, Mark Hebden was a good player. He won this game uh, but as black. But I wanted to analyze this game in terms of uh, suggesting an alternative for white um, and where white could have improved and maybe kept the attack going and so we'll get to our main position after we play d4 here they take and go e5 and so I'll mention that the fourth part of the lecture is gonna be all about bishop takes d4 in this position and what's called the Koltanowski Gambit. Uh, that'll be part four. And uh, so E takes D4, E5, this is the max Lang attack. So our repertoire is based on four different gambits actually. The first is the Urasov Gambit, like the backbone. The second is the Scotch game or the Scotch Gambit or as some call the modern attack against the two knights defense. That's the second one. The third one is the Max Lang attack. And the fourth is the Koltanowski gambit. Where when we play e4 and they play e5, we're angling for a transpo transposition into one of those four gambits. Um, and all four of those gambits are, you know, as far as gambits go, they're the most sound ones you can play. You know, maybe something like the, you know, the King's Gambit is probably not all that sound. Um, the Queen's Gambit is, but you know, stuff like the Go Ring Gambit, and let's say the, um, the Halloween Gambit, stuff like that. Those all actually have reputations, in my opinion. But this is a good one to go for. Remember, unlike. Uh, the lines against the two knights defense in this one. We have to ride the tiger. We take the knight let him take the bishop Play rookie one after the e file opens um, And after bishop e6 knight g5 Queen d5 and I I forgot to mention in the last video What looks like maybe to the naked eye a somewhat obvious move the queen takes here uh, Well, we just take the bishop here and after F takes, what would you guys play in this position? I'll give you a couple seconds. You can pause if you want. And the move that you guys should have found <coughs> was Queen H5 check. You notice just picking up that bishop, and you will win. You'll win a handful of games like this. Um, but it's just a good trap to know um, because people that don't know the theory are gonna see the obvious Queen takes F6, and they're likely to play it. But queen d5, uh, this is what you'll probably see at the higher levels. Uh, knight c3, important one to remember. Remember, you can hit that queen. This is untakeable because we can take the queen and exploit this pin. So in the last game, we looked at a game by Steinitz where he played an early g4. But it's actually better to play site knight to see e4 first and only after black castles now I'll go g4 and this is what this is the line we're going to look at in this game and this is actually what I would recommend that you play with white queen e5 has to be played um what happens if if queen d5 here well um you should see that we can just take on g7 here and when the rook has to go to g8, right? Now just knight f6. So we're forking the, the rook and the queen. Okay, so let's say the queen moves to d6, for example. Not taking the rook here, you might be tempted to take this rook, but knight g to e4 actually able to trap that queen. So that's a nice trick. It's another nice trap in this line. And um, instead of queen d5 in this position, 
I want to look at one other sideline. Queen takes g4, check. Because you may see this, right? Well, we just check on g4 with the queen. Bishop takes g4, knight takes f7. So we're forking those rooks here. Um, and after black would take on f6, for example, we take on d8, knight e5. Remember, if, if rook takes here, that bishop is hanging. So knight e5 here, we want to go bishop f4. Remember, if you know if we take here, then f3 is weak, and so bishop f4 probably the best play after knight f3 here. Just king g2, and knight takes e1, rook takes e1, bishop b4, c3, and according to the theory, white is is a little bit better in these positions, and you can kind of see if you study that closely. Okay, so. Let's go back to the main line, the move that was played in the game, queen e5. Um, so Delaney took on e6, and Hebden ret retook with the f-pawn. Bishop g5 was played, and this is so far so good. Uh, both sides are, are playing reasonably well. Uh, bishop b6. Uh, take on g7 here. Queen takes g7. Bishop f6. Um, skewering the queen and the rook, but this is still pretty close to even. Um, queen h6 was played. And um, and now king g2 by Delaney. Delaney saw, uh, figured that if he took this rook and after retakes here, the dark squares are pretty weak, and um, this bishop is really one of the key defenders of white, white's position uh, because white's king is maybe a little bit weaker than, than black's. But king g2, knight b4, g5 was played. So hitting that queen, queen goes to h4. And now knight to g3. So white saw that this is going to be a big threat if black plays the move d3. So by blocking um, this queen's view of the f-pawn, um, that's eliminated as a threat. Now queen f4 is played in the game. And now rook e4, good move. By Delaney and then Queen D6 and in this position the rook was now taken on H8 but I think when I was looking at this game um, I found I found with my computer a better line here that white could actually play Queen G4 here it's a nice move because it targets this weak pawn on <coughs> uh, on e6 here for example here yeah black can take on c2 but we just go rook d1 and now black has to defend this somehow but now we just take this rook and if notice that if the other rook would have moved something like this then we would just take here followed by take on this square so that's exactly what happen either way we're going to take one of the rooks um, win the exchange and then we take on on e6 and after we do so white actually does have an advantage um, the computer will give like a plus two advantage in this position here so that is how i think white should have played and could have improved in this position to get the queen to g4 and uh, try to pick off this e-pawn here and get gain the advantage but that uh, was bishop, after bishop takes h8 there's no advantage here for white and if a rook takes a3 this is this was all played in the game knight d5 queen g4 was now played a rook f8 rook f1 so 
This is prophylaxis against this move that black wants to play. Knight f4, king h1, d3, you take on d3, take on d3, knight h5. So it looks like white wants to trade knights, which is what happened. He took back on h5 with the queen. Queen d5, queen g4, rook f5 was played by Hebden. F3 here, and now D2. And so now, now the D pawn is looking quite dangerous. And um, Rook D1 was played, Rook takes G5. Black is playing really well. And after Queen F4, Black actually missed an opportunity to win the game on the spot. He played C6, but um, I want you guys to pause the, pause the game here and figure out a move, the move that wins because both players at this point were in time trouble. And I wanted you to figure out what's the winning move for black here. You can pause the video. All right, and the, the move I, I hope you guys found was Rook G1 check. Nice move to find there. You can see after Rook takes G1, just Bishop takes G1. This is over. You can see with the threat of queening here, game over. But c6 for some reason was played. I don't understand that move. I would never play c6 there, even if I was in time trouble. It's not obvious at all. Queen f8, check. Bishop d8. Queen f7 was played. Now rook g6. Rook f4 was played, queen d3. Rook b4, and b6. So white was trying desperately to get counterplay here. The, pr the main problem is that the, the d pawn is just too strong for black. Rook g4, rook f6 here, attacking the queen. Queen g7, queen takes f3, check. And now rook g2. And actually, white resigned here um, because after queen takes d1 check, rook blocks, and then queen f3 check, um, it's pretty much game over. Thank you guys.